Are you hoping to take the Magento Certified Professional JavaScript Developer Test and to be able to pass it? Guess what? My friends, I took it a couple, well, actually about a week or two ago, and I passed it. See, what I want to share with you is my story of how I passed it. What's unique about this, this is the first test I have taken without writing a study guide. I took my own medicine, and I'm going to share with you that story of how I was able to accomplish this, and more importantly, how you can also become a certified developer that knows JavaScript inside and out. So let's talk about it. You probably will see me in some videos say this. I have no interest ever of taking the JavaScript developer test. Now order management is that one for me. JavaScript, it's it's had no appeal to me whatsoever. But I would say it's been over the last couple of months, I've come to this realization. Those things I don't feel like undertaking or learning actually might have far greater value. And the value in this is getting in there and learning something I don't feel like doing it. Overcoming that self-instinct, I guess you might say, of just wanting to do what I've always done, as opposed to challenging myself to tackle something new. So with this, I want to share with you three points as you tackle this JavaScript developer certification, if that's something that's in your agenda here. So not point number one, let's study with consistency. This was probably the most important thing for me of all. I run a Magento agency. So I am here on my computer every weekday, every business day, I am building websites, that's, that's what I do. And that's probably what you do as well. So getting it so that you can focus is really tough. So what I did, first thing in the morning, I made this commitment four times a week, 15 minutes a day. I learned I cannot check email, I could not look at Slack, nothing. I came down to my computer, I sat down, and I started studying. I studied, studied. I mean, maybe I could take a couple extra minutes sometimes, but when that 15 minutes was over, I was done. Point number one is consistency. You must be consistent. I took two months. For you, it might be a little more, it might be a little less. I don't know, which takes me into point number two. Locate and focus on those concepts that seem especially difficult. If there's something that's, it just, oh, UI components, I mean, how about that? If you do everything that you can to avoid UI components, in fact, maybe you're one of those people that still uses those PHP classes to create forms as leftovers from Magento 1, just because you've never wanted to get into UI components. You gotta overcome that, you got to check that, because otherwise you're never gonna pass this test. And if you try to fit your old ways, your old habits, into a, a test. It, it's just not going to happen. So one thing I had always wondered is how could I take a existing UI component and actually nest one of my UI components inside that, like it create actually a new separate instance and nest it in there. Well, it took me, I'm guessing a couple hours to be able to track that down. Examples, and I, I was working through code and trying to figure this out. But you know the feeling of, I would say liberation, when I was able to figure that out, when I cracked that part of that, of my knowledge. It was incredible. Um, another light bulb moment for me was when I learned that the X Magento init script tag actually is parsed out and applied as data mage init's attributes on all the elements that they apply to, as long as it's not using the asterisk selector. I didn't know that, and I, th I think that could actually potentially be really useful knowledge in the future as I'm writing JavaScript on a Magento page. So if you don't know it, if it seems like a black box, you gotta work through it, you gotta fight your way through it, no matter how easy, well, but really how hard or difficult it seems. And I, I think that was uh, really critical for me to be able to pass this test because I've always deferred scoping to somebody else uh, if, if I have to actually in, inject a, a UI component to somewhere else, uh, into another UI component. Just some of the stuff, it just seems like these black boxes. Be able to overcome that, so important. Number three, this was, I, I found this very fascinating. Take the practice test, but take it right. And I'm gonna, going to do another video about practice tests and how to do that correctly. So basically a couple of weeks before I took the test, I got 81% on it. I worked through it, I, I treated this as if it, this was the real test. In fact, recently I just added in a, um, a feature to the practice test where it will show you the time left, just like the real test, it will also show you your time per question. So you can start seeing if your questions are bumping up over the minute and a half maximum that it would be on the real test. But most importantly, at the end of the test, you get a tally of your average time per question. Again, if that is anywhere close to a minute and a half, you need to do more study. And here's what I want to share with you about the practice test. Um, when I, after I, I worked through all these questions, jQuery, questions about UI components, checkout, customization, templating, and all this kind of stuff, I went through and I did not look at the answers. I looked at the this, this score, I looked at how what my individual scores were per objective. It's one of those five objectives, I looked at that and said, okay, how am I doing here? Overall, it was doing pretty good. 
As such, I continued my study. I continued digging into this stuff. I did not look at the questions. I did not look at the answers. As as soon as I would look at them, I would start memorizing them and would devalue future times of taking that practice test. So in the end, I booked the test for Tuesday morning. I was honestly pretty nervous uh, because I talked about it on a live stream, uh, I think the week before. I had I actually tried to reschedule it. I, I was not wanting to take this test. I didn't feel totally ready for it. However, due to a bug in the system, I decided to go ahead and take it because I had no other option. So, feeling nervous that morning, I took a few moments, I just stepped outside, took some deep breaths of fresh air in. It seemed like I couldn't fail it, right? I mean, it had been really embarrassing to fail it. But the good news is, I came out of that test and got an 80% score on the JavaScript developer. So, of course, the question everyone's going to be asking is, what type of questions are on that test? Well, they're all related to JavaScript, if you probably didn't guess that already. What my suggestion is, the study guide even the Magento U study guide. So go to u.magento.com, download the study guide, review it, work through it. Of course you can look through ours and there's a lot of great information, supplemental, really helpful information in there. But you want to work through this line by line. These are the topics that are, that are discussed on the test. And most importantly, like I talked about in point number two, build examples, use cases for what you're talking about. It's so, so critical. Do you prove your knowledge, you grow your knowledge, you extend your knowledge. As a result of you learning even more about checkout, templating, UI components, as you learn about like how does the defaults object work and, and how do you load in values from another UI component, it's actually extremely simple. And it's like one of those duh moments for me that why haven't I used this in the past? As you do this, what I what I say is, okay, you get your certification, that's great. You hopefully get a little bump in pay. But over the next course of the next couple of years, your pay should drastically increase because the value you bring to this company, to where you work, is also going to increase. And of course, your salary should increase with the value that you're bringing this company. That's where your payback comes as you become a certified JavaScript developer. Hope you found this video helpful. This is my story and the secrets that I implemented in order to be able to pass the JavaScript developer exam.